amazing. My life is not my own, but so much of the time my life is about me. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, you are not your own, you are bought with a price. So if, li if life is not about me and it's about my relationship with God, and God says that I am to be more concerned about others than myself, what am I doing with that? Do I ignore it or embrace it? It's the choice, and it, it, it's my choice, and it affects my relationships with God. Question one. What areas of my life... Can you do me a favor? I'll put one of those on each table. Thanks. What areas in my life am I focused on myself instead of others or at the cost of others? Quick example. All right, simple one. Keep my kids, me at home, watching TV. Three kids, they want to talk to dad, they want a relationship with dad. You know my response is? Be quiet. I can't hear the TV. You're interrupting this show, this, you know, these make-believe figures and a make-believe life and everybody's beautiful and perfect. I need to hear what they're saying. Now be quiet, you know. I need the plot. I need to know what's going on. What was I telling them? Me watching this 30-minute episode or hour episode was more than my relationship with them. A TV show was more important to me at that time than my kids sitting there want to have a relationship with their dad. How many years did I do that? How many years? God, forgive me. Say, so what areas am I focused more on myself instead of others, and what's that cost those around me? My wife, my kids, my coworker, my family. Are you going out with the guys and leaving your, your, your wife at home? You have a job where you're moving up, but your buddy's just there, and you're just stepping all over to get to the top and leaving him behind? I don't know. You know. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's not a secret. We know what we're doing, right? We may not be, you know, wanting to admit it or even look at it, but I think we know the truth. Now that we have identified those areas, this is question two. If it is not about us, how do we become more like Christ and have the same attitude towards others as Christ had towards us? The results are up to God. It's only our about our response, not the response to others. So you know the deal. We don't need wear a game face in here. We keep all the stuff, the crap outside and get real, go deep, get out of the surface, get out of the shallow end of the pool, let's really go deep, one, two, three, go. I just want to be able to uh, wrap this up and uh, first of all, I, I want us to stop and take a moment. Uh, Hugh's mom this is sepsis, is that what it is? And uh, she's not doing good. And I just uh, want us all to take a minute here. Let's pray. Uh, Father, you're God, and it's all about you. And so in this moment of need, I just pray for Hugh and his mom and his family that you would just uh, be in their lives, that you would just, uh, just, just bring your spirit over that household. Bring your presence to Hugh's mom. God, let her sense you right there with her. I ask that you lift her up. I ask that you touch her mind, her body, her spirit, her emotions, and for Hugh's whole family. God, we, they want to see you in this. We want to see you in this. And I just pray for your will be done. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. All right, God. Um, what I don't want is for you guys to just walk out of here after another good breakfast and after some good discussion, okay? We need to do something. If we want to be different in our lives, if we want to uh, have this relationship with God by following Christ, then we need to go out and do. Prayer is part of that. What we just did is part of that. All right, but, um, you know, for me... Uh, TV and stuff in my house has changed. It, it, one, it's not as much because now I don't have so much time because I need to be out there pouring myself out. I need to be out there doing what Jesus did. But the times that I have with, with my kids, we are watching TV. It's not Dad watching it. It is we. And we're having conversations. And it's okay to interrupt Dad. 
he gets over it now real easy so um, but the challenge here uh, for you guys is this and and what Stephen was talking about pay it forward and this kid his idea was this I'm gonna go out and help one person and every person I'm gonna go out and help three people and each of those individual people I'm gonna ask them to help three people and that whole pay forward concept okay so what I want us to do is I want us to start moving into that all right not necessarily tell them hey now you you gotta you know but us as a group as a body of Christ moving forward doing as Jesus did touching the lives of those around us what kind of impact are we gonna have I think a lot of us maybe even all of us can walk out this door right now and we know where we, we can go home and start that can't we there's somebody in our house so the next, this is what, and, and honestly, guys, yeah, I know you're hearing me, but I really do this. Take it to heart. Move into this. This next seven days, let this be your focus. All right? It, don't worry about yourself. We take care of ourselves. We, we easily take care of ourselves. Without even thinking about it, we're thinking about ourselves, okay? But for the next seven days, think about everybody that you come in contact with first. Have your mind go to somebody else first. Start your day saying, God, interrupt my day with opportunities that I can reach my hand out, that I can be others-minded, and I can touch somebody. It might just be a word. It might be that person you pass in the hallway at work and just say, this is me. Oh, hey. That's what I do. There are certain people I treat different ways, and at the bottom it's that, hey, person. I need to stop and say, hey, how are you? And I need to put a smile on my face. And I need to extend my hand. Okay? Who is it for you? When you walk out this door, when you're with your friends, with your, with your wife or, or your kids or your coworkers or the people that you hang out with, everybody needs something. Let your eyes see to what they need. We've been passing it by every day. You know, this, you know what I love about H? H will be driving down the road, and he'll see a car broken down the side of the road. Yeah, I have watched him turn around and go back because they were on the other side of the road to see what... We need to be doing that kind of stuff, don't we? We need to be living out the kind of life because I'm telling you, if you want to feel your purpose fulfilled, if you want to feel joy in your life, if you want to feel that you have a reason to give up, get up, give up, sorry, get up, then do that. This is, look, we have to take this right here. We have to take this at its word. All right, I can go into a, a long talk just about this. Scott, what do we do with this? What are we supposed to do with this? Thank you. We're supposed to read it, okay? That's what we need to do. And I kid him about it because I've just, you know, it's important to God because it is the breath. This is the air, as, as, as Don says, these are our lungs. This is where life comes from, okay? And we ask God what we to do with this. It is not a hard thing to open your eyes and see the needs around you. Do it. Do something. Don't walk out of here. All right. When you see me, ask me what I did, because when I see you, I'm going to ask you what you did. And you guys at the table, remember who you, who you sat with. Remember what they said they were going to do. Challenge them on it. What did you do, brother? Whose life did you impact? Because that's where our fulfillment comes from. You will see a difference. This is not Steve telling you it's so. It's Steve living out what God told me. So I'm telling you, it's in his word. It's true. And we have to we have to believe it. There's a story that um, uh, Don told Wednesday is the man took Jesus at his word and he departed. We all need to do that.